Good day, partners. Kenny M here. My epic adventures. What have we got here? Something from Perth. Performance diesel intercoolers. Oh, what's in the box? Thirteen plate, stacked. Um, heat displacement, forty-five thousand BTU. Custom bracket. It suits the front mount intercooler that um, PDI also manufacture and supply for the seventy-nine series. The trans. Mission cooler replacement really is only relevant, I'd suppose, to 79 series with the PDI front mount intercooler. Um, not so sure about anybody else who manufactures uh, front mount intercoolers and whether or not they may provide a product uh, for auto conversions. Going to split this video up into a couple of segments. One is we're just going to get straight into um, replacement of the transmission cooler. Um, Second part is a bit of background on why I'm doing it and third part will be uh, just some background stuff of um, uh, the actual process itself rather than just the wham bam slam thank you ma'am uh, fitment so if you're interested in all that sort of stuff you'll see it in this sort of uh, break up okay Got the grill off Well, there's no comparison, is there? Really? Um, eight little um, eight mil bolts, no luck nuts. What I did find is I mounted up the two top ones each side, they married up okay, but the bottom ones didn't, so I drilled through those aluminium brackets at the bottom to marry up with the holes in the mounting bracket. Not a biggie, I think. Uh, also, be very careful of these aluminium fins. If you touch them or look at them wrong way, they'll start flipping out on you. You'll see that I've straightened up a couple there. To get to the two bottom bolts where I need to fit up the bracket for the new transmission core, I need to access them from underneath and behind the winch. So I want to pull off the bash plate to start off with. Bash plate off, now I can get access to the bottom mounts for the... the um, into cool, front mount into cool. There's one where my finger is right up there, and the other one is on the inside. It's up where my fingers are pointed. Up there. You should be able to get that with an extension. This uh, changeover, I need to move one of the cool hoses, transmission coolers. That's one there. That one's fine. That goes back to the transmission. It comes from the transmission. And there's another hose right there, which goes up the transmission cooler. I need to move it from going up that way on the driver's side, going that way on the um, passenger side. I was going to modify this bracket, I'm doing that now. Um, seven mil holes, drilled out the existing holes, or M5, uh, to take a M5 uh, rivet nut. They fit in there now. Going to deburr them. Then I'm going to stick some um, kill rust on the metal surfaces, both front and back, uh, before inserting the rivet nuts. All deburred now. Bit of kill rust. That's a rib nut in. Have the mounting bolts out of the uh, front mount in the cooler now. But when I went to, yeah, in the original in the, uh, transmission coolers off as well. When I went to mount this up, it didn't quite line up with the holes. I needed a little bit more length. So there used to be uh, eyelets there. And I've cut them out, top and bottom. And I've actually trimmed down the uh, rib, nub, rib nuts as well, probably about a mil. Just give me a bit of clearance, hopefully, between uh, the rib nuts and um, the front mount intercore. Well, the last um, few mods I've done on this seem to have 
worked a bit. I've only got one, um, one of these brackets on the bottom. What I've done is I've stuck in a little steel rule there between the rib nuts and the front magnetic core just to give a gap between them so I don't want the rib nuts rubbing up against the front mount of course. Well that's in nice and tight now and I've made sure that I can fit my ruler in between the back of the rib nut and the front of the front mount intercooler as well and all of those eight rib nuts. Now I'm going to modify the um, bottom bracket of the cooler as well now I'll show you what I mean. I've mentioned I've already modified these bottom brackets by trimming them up and drilling, re-drilling the holes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the bit of aluminium out from that uh, hole which is at the top of the screen all the way down to the end here so there's a slot that's a bit better now see the slots in them Add my file get rid of the rough edges too top mounting bolts have some look type 243 on them uh, these bottom ones down here now I've got about a um, one or two mil gap if you can see that imagine trying to pull them out and in um, without the rib nuts I suppose uh, the manufacturer would probably say that uh, it should have the um, oil claw on it before you mount it up. Those of you who are watching intently would want to know how I've done um, the bottom bolts. Well, this bottom bracket, because I've undone the two screws each side, one there and one the other side, it's pretty flexible. You can see I can get the uh, socket in there. It's a little 3 inch socket. Yeah, sorry about background noise, I've got the mower man here. I'd recommend you use a pipe fitting on this if you've got it, a pipe spinner. Rather than ring open ender, I've used the ring open ender. The only reason I say that is because these are all aluminium fittings and it's not going to be, except for the pipe fitting there. So the, the uh, female receptacle and the cooler is all aluminium. And um, it'd be pretty easy to um, twist the fitting out of the cooler or do some damage to it. So I'll uh, be pretty careful with it. They are uh, interference fit, they're flared fittings. Um, so no tape thread or anything like that. Bit of a backyard job, but anyhow, a little hand pump into one hose, that one into the cooler, and into the bucket the other. Let's see how we go. I think that's about half a litre or a litre. Old cooler's off. Put a bolt in that end of that hose. That goes to the uh, tank. Uh, core at the bottom of the radiator. I've just got to swap um, from the driver's side to the passenger side outlet and the transmission from the passenger side to the driver's side in the tank. This arm hose goes back to the auto transmission. Well apart from a bit of a wash I think I've cleaned it. finished now. So that's the um, PDI front mount transmission cooler fitted to a 79 series twin cab fitted up with the PDI front mount intercooler the AB60 automatic transmission conversion from wholesale automatic transmissions I've also got the PWR radiator with the in tank transmission cooler in the bottom as well next thing is uh, to load it up and uh, give it a flogging and see how it goes have to wait for the results on that, eh? Heat displacement, 45,000 BTU. Custom bracket. It suits the front mount intercooler that um, PDI also manufacture and supply for the 79 series. Gets rid of what I have installed or wholesale automatics or their agent installed for me, which was a um, tube and fin cooler. If you want to know more about the tube and fin cooler, um, 
go back and have a look at my AB60 or six-speed automatic transmission conversion videos. I think there's about two or three of them, and I talk about that a little bit in those videos. GVM, 4,499 kilos. Uh, rear axle loading, rating is 2,900 kilos. Tow the Matrix, 2,600 ATM. Probably uh, run at about 2,600 when we go on trips. Um, the tow ball weight's probably about 300 to 320 kilos. So I really load up the back axle. But I have plenty of weight left over the front axle. But combined are uh, the GCM combined mass still 68 80 kilos and uh, when I do go on extended trips with the boss um, we're probably uh, I reckon 60 600 in fact um, I've got some figures here from the last time I got it weighed GCM I was 6440 so I was 360 kilos under and that would have been on the front axle. See, I was under 347 there. So you can see I really lay it up. What's that got to do with the um, transmission cooler? After installing the uh, AB60, I took it for a little drive up to Agnes Water from where we are in the wide bay, a few little hills there and a couple of little stretches. And I got the transmission temperature up to, I don't know, 104 degrees centigrade, something like that. Also, I'll say that I think it's um, uh, 50 to 110 degrees or 60 to 110 degrees centigrade is um, good operating temperature. And on that trip, I wasn't giving this a hard time. I just had it in full auto. Didn't have it um, with uh, torque converter lock on and doing manual shifts. But I want to see how it went. I'm going for a bit of a trip later this year. And there's going to be a shitload more hills. So I want to make sure that the transmission um, doesn't get overheated. And I'd rather have it a little bit cool than um, too hot. I have put uh, the high capacity sump on the AB60. I've done a separate video for that too, so if you want to know more about that, go have a look at that video. So what I'm thinking of doing is putting in some nut shirts into the bracket. That way I don't need to get into the nuts behind. And you see their top mounted fittings and these are side mounted fittings. So one of these hoses down here will need to come across probably over here. And from that I was just looking at the mounting bracket. The two top mounting holes. Simple enough. They just go in the top where the top mount mounts up. The two bottom mounting holes. One there. One there. up where the bottom of the intercooler is. One there, and they're about 310 mils apart, and one over the other side as well. To get proper access to that, I'll need to take off this bottom um, radiator protection panel. It's just plastic. Um, four bolts, uh, 12 mil, I think. One there, one on the other side, and two up here. So I'll work that out as well. I've mentioned I've already modified these bottom brackets by trimming them up and drilling, pre-drilling the holes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the bit of aluminium out from that uh, hole which is the top of the screen all the way down to the end here. So there's a slot on all four of the mounting holes and the reason I'm doing that is so I can actually slide it into the mount. Uh, the uh, bottom bolts are going to be a uh, bugger to pull out and pull in, put, put back in, whereas if I've just undo them a, a couple of threads I could slide this in and mount it up. An error, not a critical error, but I probably should have done this before mounting it up. Flushed out the um, new cooler. Just going to make it a little bit more time consuming here and maybe a little bit more messier in the front of the car. I think that's about half a litre or a litre. Now this is all low pressure, believe it or not. Surprised me, which is why they got just normal hose clips on the fittings, not AN fittings or um, tapered thread or anything. I might let it sit like that for about half an hour, I reckon, just in case there's an airlock in the cooler. Let the air come up to the top if possible and um, give it another squirt. I don't think I lost too much fluid. 
get in there and clean that up. Um, that's the flush fluid. I reckon I might have lost a little bit out of the hoses, maybe 100 mil or so, 150 mil of fluid. Now we'll see how it goes when it drives around, eh? Just took it for a spin, it seems to go okay. No noticeable change, which I'd expect. Had a couple of little leaks, one there, one there, so got the boss out here and she helped me and I've tightened those fittings up again. These fittings are more or less original, there's an AN fitting. Each side that comes in the PWR radiator and the AN fittings were installed by the local agent for wholesale automatic transmissions. And I've nipped them up pretty well, but uh, there's no sign of uh, transmission leaks there. Well, that's it. That's the job done. Thanks for watching. If you watched this far, cheers.